Okay, hello, it's Reiko from Finland here today. We're making two cards with distress inks using their ability to be reactivated with water in two ways. One softer card and this with a higher contrast. So let me move these to the side and let's start with the cardstock. And this time it can be anything, but I'm showing you this. <coughs> Mine is from Elizabeth Craft Designs. I just did a <coughs> sorry, guest spot there. And I really like, I'm not sure if it shows through the camera. Yeah, you can see those little, little, like it's somewhat porous looking. So I think that's rather fun effect. So let's cut the card base. So this is like 12 by 12 sheet, which I'm cutting to 10 centimeters. That is four inches, I think. And then a little less than 15 on the other way. Let's do four. Fifteen and a half centimeters. Again, this could be like any size. But I'm being like really frugal. I guess that's the right word. And this way, because this is the size, then I can make the backing with the same same twelve by twelve sheet. So here I have the two cards and now I already have something on there. Okay, let's start the first one actually with this one. There's a reason for, for that, which you'll find out later on. Let me bring out the distress inks. You could really, well, you can see I love blues and shades of different blues, but you could really just use blue, red, and yellow, the primary colors. So I'm starting with mustard seed because I have the new spongy thing. I'll put a bit yellow there and touch there. Then let's <coughs> Continue with the picked raspberry. At first I'm going to a blank spot and then I go over the yellow. So I get an orange shade there. Maybe here a spot too. And then let's move over to the green. The, the blue one. This is Blueberry Sketch. If you want to know the names, actually, it's it doesn't matter <coughs> which ones you're using. But what you want to do now is go a bit over, but be careful or try to avoid blending all three colors like to the same spot because well <coughs> then you know what you're gonna get or do you if I mix red with blue and yellow what's the end result okay I'm just silent and trying to watch the chat if you answer. Let's go with that one. Still. A bit greeny shade here. Nobody answer. Yeah, but it's anyway, it's brown. So if you mix all the all the colors together, you end up with a brown. And nothing wrong with brown. 
so to speak but if you're going for this kind of rainbow effect that might not be good and of course you could use the like really red one because there's I think it's barn door or something like that you could use that one but I'm somehow drawn to the more pinkish shade of the distress sinks some yellow and as you can see you can go over the colors again to really get the vibrant look so what I'm doing I'm just picking up some color and then rubbing it into the card face Still a bit. I'm thinking that's done. And these white little spots, silly me, I put the lotion on my hands before, well, an hour before we started, and it seems it still hasn't soaken in yet. So there's some lovely fingerprints there, but never mind, that will do. The next step, we're doing the flowers. <coughs> Oh, you don't need the orange one. I think I didn't even use that one. Did I have the lock? Lock even open. Well, I try to pro promise you to use it on the other one. But yeah, let's do the flowers. So because these three things are reactive with water. Hi, Ada. We can use water to stamp away the ink. Let me move these because <clears throat> otherwise they'll react too. So I have this stamp from the Prima ink and layer collection. And this is the solid one. So I'm spritzing it with water. And then thinking where I'm going to put my flower here. Stamping it. Removing it and having the rock ready there we have the place for the flower it's like a ghost ghost flower <clears throat> let's do the other one just spritzing some water okay now that's too much then another one here So now we have two ghost flowers there. And Hi, Sila. We can try if we can remove more ink from this one. I'm thinking it's somewhat like that. Now, there's two funny looking blobs but let's continue with that a bit later and do the other one <coughs> as you can see they are quite different and even though the ink is reactive with water you would never get a total white with just using water so let's use another technique I, yeah, I've heard about the pleach too. I'm, I haven't tried that one because putting pure pleach on a paper sounds a bit scary. Okay, usually I'm all, all for trying experimenting. That sounds scary, but I really need to try it because I've heard the same thing. <coughs> so why did I do this card first? Okay, where did I put it? Come on, there. It's because now I'm going to ink the stamp 
with archival ink and as I don't clean my stamps the end result might have been something completely different than just stamping with pure water and what I'm stamping the design on it's two post-it notes of course you could use one if you had bigger but as I have these teeny tiny ones and a big stamp it won't fit so I need to use two hi Petra and hi everybody hi Joanne and Karen Julie David okay here we go we have two flowers done <clears throat> now we can move that away and then we just cut okay again if I would have thought I could do this beforehand so you wouldn't need to watch me cut but now you can chat I'm watching me trying to cut the shape as quickly as I can the more care you put in this phase the better the end result well maybe not in this card because I'm not aligning the stamped in image perfectly anyhow but if you're doing or wanting to have a really crisp edge the more effort you put into the cutting part the better the end result because everything that's like pink here or between the inked or stamped edge will stay white so if you want to have the design continuing all the way through through the flower to the flower then you need to be a lot more careful with your cutting than I am not right now here we go and what we have now is two masks and they are this way so let's put the first flower here oh, why don't I do that this way because every card I've been done so far is the taller flower on the right and a shorter flower on the left but let's be Avengers. We do it other on our way around. A bit there. Yeah, that's the way. So now we have masks, which are masking, of course, the white. <coughs> Hi, Anna. That is hey. Great to have fins. Yippee. Okay, what to start? Let me just show you this one really quick. As you can see, I put the. Uh, oh, come on, what is the state? Blue here. So it would ha have the high contrast. So let's do a similar one here. And I promised to use the orange one in this one. So must use the orange. When you're inking around the masks or the flowers you want to be a bit careful because if they move and you end up having the ink underneath the edge of course it's not white anymore like so yellow yeah, let's go with yellow Right there and maybe yellow here of 
of course, if I would have more like this inking thingies, I wouldn't have to change every now and then. But because I only have two, you need to kind of bear with me here. And yes, let's now go in with the orange. Now there's a brown spot. Because mixing the opposite colors, it's like mixing the primaries. Because, come on, they are the primaries. Just mixed. So. More yellow there. Bit there. I think you more blue now. It's awfully sunny. Okay, what are you talking about? Let's... Oh, yeah, I'm teaching in <coughs> Seinäjoki next Saturday, so it's going to be fun. And you're going to be making two mixed media projects. For example, one on the one. What are the rectangular ones you bought, Joanne? I'm not. Sorry, I'm not following. I might, must have missed something. Okay, now there's an ugly, ugly spot. But. Let's go with that one. Oh, by the way, if you are like me and doing your stuff and then you have all the lids off the things, I mean, you probably know this already, but it's written on the underneath as well, the color of the name, the color of the ink pad. Because I was always wondering, like, uh, which one is which? And then I found out that one. Like, hello. I'm not a blonde. So, here we are. Then let's remove the masks. Okay, that was half the whole. Of course, you can use this, like, over and over again. But with distressed inks, it might con not contaminate because they don't contaminate, but if this is one is like really, really blue and you ink with orange on top, it might have like a brownish tint around. Okay, I can take the cards with me. After the show, if you want, I can show the project I'm teaching at Sina, okay? Just scream, yay! So, let's continue now. Let's put these side by side and do the like this part in both cards. And by now you probably know that one already or knew that one even before. Just spraying on my hand and then flicking. And then we take the rag and remove the water. I'm thinking that's okay. Maybe a bit more over here. That one is more subtle anyway, so let's keep it like that. It's a bit more here. Yeah. 
And here we go. And then comes the hard part. Hardest part in the this making of the cards. Aligning the line stamp because in the layer ink and layer stamp set this is just a bar there are some more but there's the solid ones and then there's the outline ones and then of course leaves so now i'm inking up the line stamp with our archival ink and let's go first with this one because these are blobs so it doesn't matter that much There we go. And then the other one. Okay, this one is even more blob than the other one. So let's go this one. There we go. And again, inking. Yeah, there's like more. These are kind of some stamps than just Prima. Even before these and my DT with Prima, I had a set from. Oh, okay. Stamp. It's not Stamp Windows, it's. Stamp. Stamping Up. Yeah, Stamping Up. Just one more. That wasn't too bad. Of course, if you would like to have them lined up perfectly, something like a stamping body would be. Yeah, John, you got it, stamping up. L uh, stamping body would be perfect, because then you would know where to stamp exactly. But to me, this was kind of fun looking because it's not perfect, but you can see the similar shape. So here we go. Then let's do the stems. And they are just drawn. So this is something I fell in love with. It's the food. Bo food. It can't be food. Well, I'll show you. Or I would show you if this would come on. Hmm. Okay, it's not working, but get and we'll put the link. <coughs> and it's in my blog post if you want to check this up. It's by Ranger. And I really love how the ink flows in this. So let's just draw a stem there and Okay, this is kind of going this way. Hmm. Maybe like that. Going here. And these ones. There. I'm just drawing two lines. I'm not being too fuzzy about it, how it goes. Just two random lines there. And because now they look a bit bare, twig, twigs with flowers on top, let's add a few leaves. And I'm adding them using the black ink. Why? Well, because that's my go-to ink, but also because if I would stamp green, it would look well, it might have uh, not show at all in the green parts and a little bit on the blue parts and turn brown in the red parts. So going with the black one that's like <coughs> foolproof and because the flowers are like black and white anyway, so Okay, that's a flying leaf now, that one. 
Maybe I need to add a bit of line there. No problem. Yeah, let's add a third leaf. Here. Like so. Then let's do the creating part now that we have ink here already. This set is from Elizabeth Craft Designs also. There's a little Eiffel Tower even, but there's these good words like hello, which are just notes to say and enjoy your day. That's like a good expression. Applies to many occasions, like just a note to say hello. So, well, let's go with that because there's a an empty spot. And of course you could use an acrylic block here, but well, you know, I almost never use that one stuff. So. And one of the reasons I never use it might also be that one day I just looked at my acrylic block and noticed it's all crooked. So no wonder I'm not using it because it makes a poor impression. Like so. Now we need to do two more things. Three more things, maybe. Maybe we'll add this one also. Just a touch of script here and there. Maybe I'll add something, some to the flowery part. So let's again line up the mask there. Oops. The other one. Like so. Oh, I have to show you this one. It's a pencil, yes. But there are seeds in the other end. So when I have used it, so it's like this big, then I can plant it. I mean, how cool is that? <coughs> Maybe I should mask again. See if I'm doodling all over the flowers, that won't look nice. Like so. Just trying to make sure that I'm not Drawing underneath it. <coughs> like so. Let me try to show you that one. Um, did I use it here? Yeah. Here I just draw oh, like this. Maybe the flowers. And here's a flower and here's a flower. So. <coughs> Sorry. And let's do the flicks first, and then I'm using the Sharpie. Yeah, that's like so cool. It's called Sprout. And like when I saw them in a logo suit, I was like, whoa, I need to get one. So what I'm doing now, what's the name of this pencil? Yeah, Sprout. This is a Finnish zoo, but the name of the pen is Sprout. And there's forget-me-nots in this one. There's also this basil one. 
a lot of stuff. So this is white embossing powder. I'm not dipping my finger in it. Kind of hoping it would get a bit moisture from my skin. So there would be like those bigger blobs. Of course, if you would have like white, white, white UT with bigger grains, that would be perfect for this. But I only have clear UT, so that doesn't cut it. Hi, Elaine. And then we have to let me just get my heat gun heat it underneath because now the embossing powder is is not attached to anything can you hear me still so if I go from the top it just blows away yeah can you see it but from underneath I'll be able to melt it without getting it all over the place. Move this around. I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera how the powder turns into white. I'm just Also, I go over it on this side. Now you can see the bigger blobs make better impression because there's just this kind of mist. But on the other hand, with the softer guard, it like goes well with the teeny tiny mist. But we can also use the Sharpie to make white marks. And for example, highlight the same. I'm just like coloring in the layers. Or the bulky layers, the ones going enjoy. Okay, now my sharpie ain't working. What white pens do you use? Because there seems to be always the hunt for the perfect white pen going on. I have a couple of white ones, but some uh, somehow this is the one I tend to use the most. Oh, there we go, enjoy. And let's do a couple of. Okay, I would do a couple of white marks. Okay, now it's working. And there you go. This cardstock is really soft, so if you go heavily on top, like scratching, it can stand it, or it will break, but something like this will do. Come on, it was working fine yesterday. Oh, 
Well, let's go with that. I'll make it better. Just a few white mini tails. And we are almost done. Not quite, but almost. How about the light? Do you guys still sting? Because the sun is now set and there's like still light outside, but it's darker than when we started. So let's add the details. Let's go with lace. To the softer one. There, where's the scissors? There. Oh, Karen had a package delivery. Oh, that sounds happy mail, maybe? And then some thread to the other one. There's one, two, three. Black and white baker's twine. Thank you, Ida. Like so. Then let's use again the secret weapon. Oh, I can't wait to have <coughs> have the. We are memory keepers. One. I think it still hasn't gone out yet. The stapler you can use anywhere that works with magnetic, so I want one. And that will like save my day. Take care of all my crafty problems. But yeah, I'm just using a stapler to attach the lace and ribbons. Of course, this is not the most sweetest thing, but I think it gives nice contrast to the lace. Things table. Um, here's the like just a twine. Oh, John is having a spring cleaning. My hat's off to you. Luckily, our apartment is not that big, so it's easy, but still. Then let's take out this one. Let's move it here. Here's my little box with crystals as you can see my flare buttons and my regular buttons so black one maybe the shiny one would go nicely to this one bye karen thank you for helping Let's use the white one there, and then we need something here. No, that's a bit dull to have two similar options. Oh, that's green. Nope. Let me go there. Which one? What about the clear one? kind of fun. What about putting it here though? That one or that one? No, I'm liking that one. Let's put the one there. <coughs> the buttons are like adding something dimensional to the piece. Just 
because I think they do so much. Just a little little thing, like a button, but it changes the look. Like so. There. And another one. And then it's just packing them with the cardstock. So again, I'm using the same one. Of course, you could use pattern charts to that well, or do like multiple layers. First, a thin black one, and then a bigger white one. Now, let me see if these will fit even like this. Yeah, it will. It will go. So it was ten centimeters. So let's put it like that. And then one, so six inches. And let's see what we have. That one there, and this one here. And now it's all a question of which kind of adhesive you prefer. You can use foam dots, you can use glue. But ever since I found double-sided tape, I've been using that one. Because I, as a kid, well, I was using the <coughs> like craft, not crafty kind of glue, but the all-purpose glue. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Erika, but I'm not sure how to pronounce that in English, but it's the Finnish way. So I was using that as a kid, and I hated when the papers start curling up and became all bouncy and bumpy and ugly looking. So luckily my father made miniatures, like little boats and stuff. And they used in their workshop a lot of double-sided tape. So when I found that one, I was happy. I was finally able to attach paper to paper without the awful looking bumps. Like so. And the other one. And I'm trying to avoid to like having my fingers on the ink because as you now know or even knew before they are activated with moisture so my fingers are bound to be a bit moist anyway so if I get that ink to my fingers and then I'm touching all over the white cardstock it's going to be filled with fingerprints well at least then everybody will know who made it because you get the impression fingerprints there so there we have it two easy beasy cards these are like fun to make even a bunch of them and as <coughs> summer is coming there's bound to be parties and like get-togethers and stuff. So it's good to have a few cards to just grab when you're going. Thank you. Okay, I think we're finished. So let me show you a few pics and let me tell you that next Monday we have Ada with us. Yay! 
and thank you all for coming. Let me just shut the recording and then show you something. So hang on tight. Thank you.